the warmest year. That's according to the European Union Climate Change Service. A press release from the group also notes 2010 through last year was the warmest decade in history. Although the northern hemisphere had higher than usual temperatures in 2020, sections of the southern hemisphere experienced below average temps. That was due to the La Nina conditions that emerged during the later half of the year. So there you go. Warmer temps ahead. Definitely, especially that we are here in the sunniest area of the world. But moving on into our local weather headlines for today in our Imperial County Air Quality Index. Moderate conditions right now over in Calexico. Still dark out there to so wait for that sun to rise, but it is looking good as far as our air quality everywhere else today. So just folks in Calexico, be cautious of that. That's kind of been the deal for the whole half of this week over in Calexico. Outside in Yuma, we are at 47 degrees. Wind speeds low coming in at 3 miles per hour, as well as low humidity at 39%. If you are out this evening, 550 will be your sunset for tonight and then relative humidity elsewhere. 39% over in uh, Yuma, 50% in Welton and Dateland currently looking at 41% for humidity. this coronavirus coverage, here's a look at where cases stand locally. For our region, that includes Yuma and Imperial County, there are now more than 600 new cases being reported in just the past 24 hours. The death toll has also skyrocketed 16 new deaths in Yuma. The Valley sadly adding another 13 and the positivity rate is at an alarming 46%. So that means almost half of those who are tested have it. CDC researchers estimate that 59% of all transmission comes from asymptomatic people. So you can find testing locations on our free KYMA mobile app to be sure that you're not unknowingly spreading the virus. Meanwhile, El Central Regional Medical Center explained its vaccine administration process after being asked if they gave it to the former and current elected officials. ECRMC said it had extra doses on hand and didn't want them to go to waste and said that they are following procedure. News 11's Gianello Giglino reports. The Imperial County Public Health Department says some COVID vaccine vials have extra doses and they decided to put staff members that fell under tier two on standby. They basically sent enough stuff to draw up five doses out of each vial. Well, what happened was is they discovered that the vials sometimes had an additional dose in them. ECRMC said it had extra vaccines because some vials included the extra doses and they already had people on standby ready to get the vaccine. Edward addressed this issue by saying they didn't want the vaccine to go to waste. A vial pulled, and after interviewing my nursing staff, we had a technician who pulled one excess full vial and we did not want to uh, waste anything. And I asked my team to be able to contact folks and that's when we started to think about what list of names will we be having moving forward as we go into tier two? It is not clear, however, who received the vaccine and how many vaccines were administered. ECRMC said it is currently administering the vaccine to the first tier and second tier. The hospital is also hopeful that President-elect Joe Biden will bring more vaccines to fight the virus. And I'm actually excited about the next administration pushing out, as the president-elect has pointed out, 100 million more vaccines. The way we're going to back battle out COVID here is two ways. One, vaccination, and two, the therapeutics that are now available for us. Tuesday night, the Imperial County Board of Supervisors voted to suspend anyone caught showing favoritism with the corona vaccine rollout. Reporting in El Centro, Janela Giglino, News 11. Well, new studies suggest that Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine is effective against the new coronavirus strain. Two new strains considered more contagious were first identified in South Africa and the UK. Researchers at Pfizer and the University of Texas Medical Branch used a mutation found in both strains to create a version of the virus. They tested it against blood from 20 people who had received two doses of the vaccine as part of the clinical trial. Researchers found no reduction in neutralization activity. The study, which was not been peer reviewed, did not test the vaccine against the full array of mutations. But researchers noted that both Pfizer and Moderna used technology that would allow them to quickly adapt for mutations.
606 and is exclusive this morning today marks the 10th anniversary of the January 8th shooting in Tucson, Arizona. A gunman opened fire during an event for the Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Giffords and her husband, Senator Mark Kelly, sat down with Savannah Guthrie on the Today Show. Take a listen. If I had told you 10 years ago, you're going to be a senator, would you have believed that? No. Would you have believed that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Was no. not in my plan. And in it your heart not. of hearts. No. I had no, no. Is there any part of you that thinks it should be her? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Gabby was the member of Congress. I often think to myself, I mean, if something would have happened to me, would Gabby have become an astronaut? <laughs> Knowing yes. Gabby, probably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Savannah will have more of her exclusive conversation with Senator Kelly and former Congresswoman Giffords today, the 10th anniversary of her shooting. In the conversation, Giffords opens up about how she has continued to find hope and even humor in the darkest of places. The exclusive interview coming up this morning on Today. And new this morning, the Trump administration ends in 12 days. But after the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol, some leaders say President Donald Trump should be removed from office before January 20th. John Lork with the story. There's a new fence being erected at the Capitol. But it won't block out the memory of what happened Wednesday. It certainly was a dark day for our democracy. The day after inciting the crowd that stormed the Capitol, President Donald Trump denounced the rioters in a taped speech. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer are calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment, which could remove the president from office. We are in a very difficult place in our country as long as Donald Trump still sits in the White House. Adam Kinzinger was the first Republican House member to publicly support the idea. The president has become unmoored, not just from his duty, or even as of, but from reality itself. As the remainder of Trump's tenure is discussed, some members of the administration are resigning, including Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao, and former White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, who was serving as a special envoy to Northern Ireland. I, I, can't, I can't do it. I can't stay. Those who, who choose to stay, and I have talked to a couple of them, are choosing to stay because they are concerned that the president might put someone in to replace them that could make things even worse. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, the FBI is asking for the public's help in identifying some of the people who were involved in the siege at the Capitol on Wednesday. The Bureau has issued several posters like these with pictures of people that were taken at the Capitol. On Wednesday, a chaotic mob forced their way into the Capitol building, smashing windows and overturning benches. Several people were involved in are accused of uh, breaching high security areas and stealing items from the Capitol. The FBI is hoping the public can identify these individuals so they can be brought to justice. And a U.S. Capitol police officer died.